Hello everybody, welcome back to Boundaries. So last time we left off with, I put a worksheet underneath um, the post and it was about I statements. So today we're gonna talk a little bit about communicating your boundaries and this is where those I statements are really gonna come into play. Um, so just a quick review, boundaries are the limits that we set for ourselves. It's not about what others do, but what we choose to participate in. Um, and then this little saying here that says, resentment is my cue that I'm saying yes when I really need to say no. And that again is back to that gut feeling that we talked about before. So there's a few steps here. Um, just about noticing your feelings, identifying the cause of those feelings, expressing your position, and redirecting that conversation. So if you're feeling uncomfortable, embarrassed, or nervous, um, your boundaries are probably being challenged. And that's, again, back to that gut feeling. Um, when someone's asking you to do something or um, situations arise that you really just don't feel comfortable being part of. Um, ask yourself, what triggered this feeling? An action or a statement by another person? Um, could that be the cause of those feelings that I'm having? Um, expressing your position, so making sure that you're standing up for yourself, you're making that eye contact. Stand up straight, like there's nothing worse than slumping down um, to make you look like you're not really sure of yourself. So making sure that you're taking the initiative to stand up and tell the other person how you're feeling. And this is where those I statements come in. Um, every time you say the word you when you're trying to communicate with someone, try pointing your finger. And if you don't feel comfortable pointing your finger, then you probably shouldn't be using the word you. You in a statement is good if you're saying you are amazing or you are awesome. But as soon as you say you are annoying or you are this, it becomes a blame, which immediately allows the other person to get their back up, to get them uncomfortable and upset because they're being blamed for something. So if we talk about I statements, it's more about how I feel. I feel this, I feel that. Nobody can tell you how to feel. So making sure that you are communicating in a way. So redirecting that conversation, there's an example here. It says, I feel uncomfortable with this topic. Could we talk about something else? What kind of music do you like? So not only are you saying how you feel about the topic and it's that it's making you uncomfortable, but you're also suggesting somehow a way to change that subject into something that maybe isn't, isn't that, um, uncomfortable for you. So how to communicate our boundaries. Uh, making sure that your expectations are realistic. If you're saying that things need to be, you're trying to set that boundary, but what you're setting is pretty unrealistic and people aren't able to do that, we have to make sure that our expectations are realistic. Having a positive attitude, um, coming into anything with a negative attitude is not great and it does not allow people to be able to connect with you the same as if, it, if you were being positive. Um, creating a non-threatening atmosphere. So having a seat on a couch or a chair, making sure that your body language is open and you're not closed off. You don't want to be standing over somebody and looking down on them like this when you're having having those uh, conversations. Minimize the stress by setting a dedicated time to meet. So rather than it being in the moment when people are feeling those feelings, maybe just setting up a time or asking someone, you know, um, could we maybe talk about this? Would you like to meet for a coffee? And of course, that's gonna look very different right now uh, during isolation, but that's something that we could even say, hey, do you wanna Zoom on Friday and we can have a conversation about what this looks like and, and some of the issues that I'm having with that. And try to avoid emotion. And I know that sometimes that's difficult. I'm a very emotional person. And a lot of times when I'm having those conversations that feel uncomfortable, it's uncomfortable sometimes to set boundaries. But when you're feeling that, that uncomfortableness, just be very sure 
that, you know, I've really thought through this boundary. I really feel like this is what I need to do. So be confident in yourself and try and stay away from that anger. Um, I mean, sadness sometimes comes out anyways, but just trying to avoid that, um, that emotion that is going to allow somebody to take what you're trying to say in a different way. Um, using I statements to keep the focus on the concern and minimize the offensive behavior. Um, using positive feedback. Uh, that is, is one way, like, um, how can I say this? I guess a little bit about, we always want to let people know that there is positive things um, and we don't always want everything to be negative. So giving positive feedback to someone while you're trying to set these boundaries or examples of positive things um, can be very helpful. Listen and negotiate terms that are acceptable for both parties. I mean, everybody has a different personality. And what works for me doesn't necessarily work for somebody else. So having that opportunity to have an open discussion and negotiate how that can look to make sure that it's not an all about me situation or not all about them, but something in the middle. And that's where it comes to the different types of personalities. Um, concentrate on the problem and not the person. Don't, don't say you are the problem. Talk about the problem as something outside of that individual so that you're able to deal with it and it's not really taken as a shot at somebody. Figuring out consequences. Um, this is really important for you to do ahead of time before you decide to set those boundaries. Making sure that you sit down and you figure out what are the consequences going to be. They need to be clear. They need to be appropriate. They need to be realistic. But they also need to be understood by both individuals. Um, just because I feel like um, I know what the consequences are going to be if somebody goes against my boundary. I need to know that other people understand what the consequences of that are. So if it is saying, you know, I'm not accepting text messages after four o'clock on my work phone, don't answer your phone after four o'clock. Make sure that you are giving those instructions to an individual when you're having that conversation to say, you know, you can contact me on my cell phone between nine and four, Monday to Friday, but I don't answer my phone after or before those hours. And making sure you stick to that because if you answer your phone at 8.30 in the morning or 8.30 at night, when an individual tries to call and people are going to test those boundaries to see if you're really being honest, you answer the phone, your whole boundary is gone down the toilet. And it's very difficult to build that back up again because now you've shown that you're not going to follow through with those consequences. So people will continue to try and break those barriers. So let's walk through this example. Um, a consequence that cannot be fulfilled is an empty threat and leads to broken promises. Here's the example. So I'm struggling to get my work done on time because it depends on having up-to-date flowchart. This is stating the problem. So clearly this, um, this example is about working in an environment as a team and this is one of the struggles that is, is being, or is happening. So you've stated the problem. Now you want to state the boundary. So the boundary is, I'd appreciate it if you would complete them the day before I do my reports. This is setting the boundary that this is when you need things done. And it's allowing people to know that it is affecting how you're doing your work. So if the charts can't be completed, I'll need to talk to your supervisor to see if she can get you more help or arrange another way to get the work done. So this is describing the negative consequence, but it's not saying you, right? It's not saying um, you are the problem. It's saying there could be many different reasons why this is a problem, why this work isn't getting done. It might not be getting done on time because the individual is overworked. Maybe it is that they're just not doing their things when they're supposed to, but you can't just assume that. So 
coming across as, you know, I will talk to the supervisor and see if there's some way that I can get you some help or, or some other people to work on this with you because it's affecting how I can get my job. So it's describing the negative consequence, but it's not in a negative way. Um, and it's also letting people know that you understand that it may not be something that they control at that time. Um, but if the flow charts are done on time for the next three months, I'll bring in pizza for both our teams. This is describing the co positive consequence. And it doesn't have to be a monetary or a food or a, a reward um, in this way every time to be able to give that positive um, consequence as well. But I mean, when things are done, there's always a positive consequence because you work better as a team, things get done, there's there's not that um, feeling of resentment towards people. So having these conversations in, in a way that is, um, what's the word I want to use? Um, I can't think of the word, but a good way to move forward without everyone having hurt feelings. So accusing you statements versus diplomatic I statements. So let's use the example. You make me so mad. You are blaming somebody for making you angry. So instead, own the feeling. I feel angry and then say why. So I feel angry because of what you said. Please don't do that again. You're setting a boundary. You're letting them know that you do not want them to talk to you like that again. And that way you're not doing the you, you, you. So do any of these sound familiar? You are such a slob. You just expect me to clean up after you. You are always working. Work is more important to you than your family. You are so frivolous. You just think money grows on trees. So I want you to think about those statements and how could we change some of those statements into I statements? How could we leave that you out so that it's not blaming, but we're allowing people to know that we feel frustrated when we have to clean up after um, you from this mess. And you don't even have to use the you. You can just generally say, I am so frustrated that I walk around and clean up a mess all the time that I have not created and it really frustrates me. So again, I didn't say you, 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 but the individual is going to understand that, yeah, that's their mess that you're talking about. Even if we have the best intentions, not choosing your words wisely can leave people with hurt feelings. Um, or in a full out argument. So phrases that begin with the pronoun you imply that the listener is responsible for something. Even if you kind of feel like the listener is responsible because it's something that they did, it puts that immediate blame on, on someone else. So rather than blaming or making accusations, if you take the ownership onto how you're feeling about that, then there's no blame attached to that and it allows that conversation to flow in a much more positive way. Um, you statements make people feel defensive and, res and resentful and they'll be less likely to want to make peace. They'll be less likely to want to have that discussion and that, that back and forth with you in a positive way because they've already had their feelings hurt like they're being blamed for something. I statements force us to take responsibility for what we are thinking and feeling. And I'm going to say this, um, sometimes when you're in a situation, and, and I've been in this before, where somebody's voice has just, it's one of those voices that just you can't, it, it just annoys you. Whose problem is that? Is it my problem? Or is it the other person's problem because they have an annoying voice? The annoying voice may not be annoying to everybody. Maybe it's something from your past that reminds you of something that was annoying. So you, you are triggered by that. It doesn't necessarily mean that there's anything wrong with that person. Um, and it could maybe not be taken that way from someone else. So really, that's my problem. 
not their problem. So what do we do with ourselves or our feelings about how we can change the way that we react to other people? Um, I statements prevents us from blaming others. It, we don't put the blame on other people. We take on how it's making us feel. Everybody is an individual. We're not all going to agree on everything. We're not all always going to have the same outlook in life. So we can't expect everybody to know exactly what we need, but we need to know ourselves well enough to be able to handle situations like that. Um, we can still be assertive, but find a less hostile, more compassionate way to communicate with people. And that's where the I statements come in. It just makes things so much easier. And you'll find at first when you're trying to like look back, look back at the uh, slide we were doing, um, hold on, the sound familiar one where you are such a slob, you just expect me to clean up after you. Um, when we're trying to do those into I statements, it's very difficult. Once you start to figure out how to put that together with I statements, it becomes so much easier and you will find um, that they'll just flow off your tongue a lot easier once you've practiced it. So you statement into an I statement. A true I statement uses specific emotions, such as I feel, um, you feel joyful, anxious, lonely, resentful, angry, calm, embarrassed, fearful, etc. I feel ignored, annoyed, mistreated, manipulated, controlled, cheated, abandoned. I mean, we could go on and on and on. Um, it's also a common misperception that you can tack on the words I feel in front of a you statement. For example, I feel like you are taking me for granted. That's still an I statement. Or sorry, it's still a you statement. Just because you put I feel in front of it, you need to let them know I feel. So I feel like you are taking me for granted is not a good way to say that. How else could we say that? I feel like I'm being used to complete certain things. Like I don't know the exact example that they're talking about. Um, but how do you feel is so important, but we need to make sure that we're not doing the you, 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 right? So every time you go to say you, pick up your finger. If you're saying you're awesome, great. You're not going to feel uncomfortable about using your finger to point at somebody and say you're awesome. But if you pick up your finger and you say, you disgust me, I mean, right there, you wouldn't do that. Or I hope that you wouldn't do that. Or you would learn that that is something that is very judgmental and um, forceful on someone. So if in this example where it says, I feel, there's actually no emotion being expressed. You're saying, I feel you. No, what do you really feel? You have to attach an emotion to that I feel statement. So I want to take the time. I'm going to post a few more um, I statement worksheets just in the uh, comments underneath this post. I would love for you to be able to try and work through some of those. If you have any questions, please feel free to email you can connect with me through Facebook, you can call me at the office, you can text me, however you would like to try and work out some of those I statements. How do we change those U's into I's? I really look forward to hearing from people as to how they're doing with that. Um, I'm here to guide you through that if you're feeling really, really stuck. And I mean, there's moments where there's certain situations that have been brought up in groups before that I have had a hard time coming up with an I feel statement. Um, so it, it's not an easy task and it does get easier as you try it. So if you have any questions, please post them below or contact me through one of my methods of contact, which I will post on this post as well. Um, I look forward to hearing from you and I hope to chat with you soon. I hope you have a great day.
and now I can't get the video to stop. <laughs>